Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about um, random variables with geometric distribution. Um, the previous lecture was uh, basically about definition, what is the geometric distribution. Um, uh, and uh, this one will be about the properties of this particular distribution. Uh, this lecture is part of the um, course of advanced mathematics for teenagers presented on unizor.com website and that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from because uh, besides the video presentation the website contains uh, the notes for the lecture um, which are very useful it's like a textbook basically so it's good good for you to read the uh, the notes as well as listen to the lecture all right so uh, first of all let me start from just reminding you uh, a couple of points about geometric distribution which I made the previous lecture. First of all, the definition. Now, the definition of uh, the geometric distribution is the following. Um, for instance, you are making a Bernoulli trial and then another and then another. They are independent Bernoulli trials, the result of which is either failure or success, and the probability of success is is P, probability of failure is obviously 1 minus P, which sometimes we are designated with the letter Q. So that's the sequence of independent Bernoulli trials. Now, what I'm interested in is uh, the first time the number of the Bernoulli trials when I get the first time success. Well, maybe it's the first one. Immediately on the first try, on the first trial, with the probability P, I will get success. But at the same time, there is a probability that the first time I will get uh, the failure. And the probability of this will be my 1 minus P, right? And then I will get success on the second time. So this is the probability of getting success on the second time. And on the third, it will be two failures, right? So this is number two, this is number three. Number one is just, just P. So these are probabilities of getting success in the first try, on the, on the second, or on the third, etc. And the geometric distribution is actually um, the distribution of probabilities among all the different numbers from 1 to infinity where the probability of um, my uh, random variable with geometric distribution with the probability of success on each Bernoulli trial pi, uh, p. Uh, so the probability of this to be equal to k is equal to 1 minus p to the k minus 1. That's the probability of having k minus, minus k minus 1 failures before I get the first success on the case trial and that would be the probability p. So these are different values and the probabilities this random variable takes. So this is the part of the previous lecture. Now this lecture uh, um, I, I will basically talk about properties of this particular distribution. Now, first of all, I would like to address it graphically. So, the distribution can be very conveniently presented. If this is 1, this is 1, 2, 3, 0, 4, 5, etc. So, my variable, my random variable, takes values of 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. So, the value of 1, it takes with the probability of p. Well, let's say, just for um, uh, definitiveness, let, let, let's p be, be one half, for instance, all right? So, I will build this rectangle, which has the base 1 and has the height, the probability p. Next one would be 1 minus um, uh, p to the first degree, which is 1 half, and 1 half, it would be 1 quarter. This is one quarter. Next would be one eighth, then we do one sixteen, etc. So this is the graphical representation 
of this probability distribution. And obviously you understand this is a geometric progression and that's why the whole distribution is called geometric. All right, so we finished with graphical representation. Now, how about uh, expectation, mean uh, value of this particular variable? Well, let's just calculate it. What is the uh, expected value? What is the mean value of the random variable? Well, if random variable takes values with probabilities, then the expectation is actually a weighted average of its values with where the weights are the probabilities. Well, I put etc. just in case the number of values is not finite. Sometimes we are using the discrete distributions with finite number of um, values of the random variable. Like for instance, when you roll the dice, what's the number? It's from 1 to 6, right? But in this case, uh, the numbers basically are not limited. So the probabilities are going down and down and down, exponentially down. But the numbers are actually going to infinity. So that's actually our case. So in our case, what can I say about our uh, expected value? Well, expected value of our random variable is equal to weighted average of its values. Values are 1 with the probability of when k is equal to 1, that would be 1 minus p to the power of 0 times p plus. The value can be 2. Ks can be 2. With the probability 1 minus p to the first times p. The value can be 3. With the probability square times p, etc. The value can be k with probability 1 minus 1 minus p to the k minus 1 p, etc. Well, do we know how to summarize this? It's not just a geometric uh, progression which we are summarizing because these coefficients are actually 1, 2, 3. Without these coefficients, it would be geometric, right? Because if, if all of them would be equal to 1, without these 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., k, then I would have a sum of geometric progressions with the geometric series. Now, how can I work, uh, summarize this? We don't know the formula or anything like that. Okay, here is what I suggest. Uh, let's call it S. All right, for simplicity. And I will use this notation, right? So let me put it this way. S divided by, you see, P is everywhere, is equal to 1, this is 1, plus 2 times Q, this is the first time, uh, the first uh, power of 1, plus 3 times q squared, plus 4 times q cubed, plus etc., plus k times q, k minus 1, plus etc., right? It just looks better this way, all right? Now, um, to summarize it, I will do the following trick. I will multiply the whole thing by q. So, s q divided by p is equal to this multiplied by q would be q. This multiplied by q would be 2q squared. This multiplied by q would be 3q cubed. The previous one, which I multiplied with, with, the, with the power of k minus 2 and the coefficient, it, would, it was k minus 1, q, k minus 2, right? That was a previous member to this. Now, if I will multiply it by q, I would get k minus 1 u k minus 1 minus not plus p 
plus etc. Now it goes to infinity. Now, what can we do about this? Well, this now is easier. Because if I will subtract one from another, what happens? S uh, divided by Q times 1 minus 1 over P, right? That's on the left. No. Uh, S, sorry. No. <laughs> Wrong. S over P times 1 minus Q. That would be on the left. Now, what would be on the right? I subtract from this, I subtract this. So, 1 is 1. From 2Q, I subtract Q, I will get Q. From 3Q square, I get 2Q Q square, I get Q square. From 4, I get minus 3, I get Q cube, etc., etc. From this minus this, I will get q to the k minus 1, etc., up to infinity. And this is a pure geometric series, and we know the sum of this. That's 1 over 1 minus q, right? Let me think about it. If x is equal 1 plus q square plus, uh, sorry, plus q, plus q square plus etc., q times x is equal to uh, q times q cube, uh, square, sorry, square, plus uh, q cube plus etc., minus So x times 1 minus q is equal to 1, and x is equal to 1 over 1 minus q. Yes, I was right. OK, so again, I don't remember the formulas. I derived them. So that's actually it. I don't need anything more, because now I can find my s. s over p times 1 minus q, you see, if p plus q is equal to 1, q is equal to 1 minus p, uh, so this 1 minus q is equal to p. So this is p, and this is p, so it would be s times p divided by p. And what is equal? 1 over 1 minus q is p. That's it, such a simple formula for uh, expected value. So we did have some tricky calculations, I should say, um, uh, but at the end it's just a simple formula and we have found out that the mean value or expectation of the geometric uh, random variable gamma p is equal to 1 over p. Okay. What's next? Next is variance, all right? Now, with variance, we do very similar thing, actually. Variance of gamma over p is equal to, again, this is a weighted average of squares of the deviations from the expected value, right? So, my values are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So, 1 minus 1 over p times the probability, the weight, weight is 1 minus uh, p uh, to 0 times p plus. Next value is 2, again deviation, oh, uh, square, I got square, deviation from the uh, expected value, square by probability, plus. 3 minus 1 over p squared times 1 minus p squared times p, etc. k minus 1 over p squared 
1 minus p uh, k minus 1 p etc okay now um, I'm not going to uh, to do the manipulations how to add up this thing but basically the idea is exactly the same uh, as in this particular case we just define some kind of a sum then we uh, put it in the parentheses we can multiply it by something subtract one uh, series from another and eventually we come to a geometric progression we just have to do it twice because it's a square so I'm not going to do it I will actually give you a ready answer. It would be great if you can uh, derive yourself this uh, particular formula. And, uh, well, if you can send it to me in an email or something like this, I'll put it on my website. Uh, but I do have a result already calculated. So the variance is equal 1 minus P, oh, sorry. Alright, so that's the answer, and as you see, it's relatively simple answer, alright? Um, regardless of the fact that the formula is uh, complex. And that's about it. Basically, the only thing which is, remain which re is remaining is the standard deviation. The standard deviation is square root of, vari of variance, which is square root of q over p. So, that's basically all the properties I wanted to present to you for this particular geometric distribution. The graphical form, uh, its uh, expectation, mean value, and uh, variance with the standard deviation. All these uh, characteristics Basically give, uh, basically give you a sense of what exactly um, the geometric distribution is. I think very useful is graphical representation when I had this staircase going down geometrically. Um, now, as far as the calculations of uh, uh, expected value mean and, uh, and standard deviation, well, it's useful to know, but basically I think it's secondary. More importantly is just to understand what exactly your um, distribution of probabilities is. Um, by the way, if you will take a look at the expectation and variance, I would like to um, address these from some intuitive uh, position. Is it intuitively right? Let's put it this way. But think about it. Now, obviously, the P, which is basically a uh, uh, the probability of the success. Now, if probability P of the success is equal to 1, which means we always succeed, there are no failures, it means we should succeed on the first try, always. And the average would be obviously uh, the first try. Success would be on the first try, and, and the average should be equal to 1, right? So, indeed, if P is equal to 1, this is equal to 1, right? Now, if P is close to zero, it means success happens very rarely, then obviously we should expect our first successful result to be further down the line. And the smaller the probability P, the further should be average number of um, tries uh, until we will get the first success. That, that's kind of an intuitive understanding that this formula is correct. I mean, obviously, the same intuitive feeling would be if this would be 1 over p squared, for instance. It doesn't really matter. But what matter is, is this actually corresponding to your intuition? And the answer is yes. There are some other formulas which also correspond to the same intuitive thinking. But the matter, the matter is that this corresponds, and it does. Now, how about the variance? Well, um, the variance can be viewed uh, in the following sense. The variance is equal to 
1 over p square minus 1 over p, right? 1 over p square minus p over p square, which is 1 over p. Now, don't forget that p is a probability, which means it's from 0 to 1. Now, how graphically these two things look? Well, these are both hyperbolas, right? In the, um, in the first quadrant, uh, this one is a little higher here and a little lower here. This one is the same. And in, it, at the point 1, 1, they coincide. So, if I'm considering only this particular interval from 0 to 1, what do we see as a difference between these two? So, from this graph, we should subtract this one. Well, obviously, this one is significantly higher, so it will be almost like infinity. Well, basically, it will go to infinity. At this point, the difference is 0, right? So, if I will draw the difference between these two things, the difference should be something like this. So, if p is close to 1, if it's equal to 1, actually, what happens in this case? Well, it means I always have a success. So, there is no deviation from the average. Average will be 1, because I will have a success in the first uh, trial. And uh, obviously, there is no deviation from this, because it's always the same value, 1, 1, 1, no matter how many times I, I try, right? So that's why my deviation, my standard deviation, my variance, would be equal to 0 if my probability p is equal to 1. Now, if probability is uh, diminishing, if it goes down to 0, then not only my average goes to infinity, but also the distribution among that average also spreads around. This is not as obvious, but, well, it is what it is. Basically, you can say that if your average goes to infinity, then the deviations from that average also increasing to infinity. Now, when I'm talking about infinity, you understand it's not a number. It's a tendency, so to speak, right? It's something which, it, it, it's a process. So, if p is goes, it go, goes down to zero, then the expected value, the mean, goes to infinity, which means it's increasing, unlimitlessly increasing, as well as variance around this particular average value, also increasing unlimitless, unlimitlessly. Well, <laughs> anyway, that's it for today. Uh, thanks very much. I do suggest you to review the notes for this lecture on unisor.com. And, uh, well, thanks and uh, good luck. <laughs>